So what's up everybody, once again Real Sports Talk Network, 10 minutes on the clock, once again welcome you to another edition of said morning show on Saturday. So what's good on the internet, what's good in life, Akeem Balaam aka LI495. So let's get right to it, by the way, make sure you write that down, that we not only on YouTube, but we also have our own website. Write that down somewhere, someplace, just in case you forget. So let's get right to it. What happened this week? NBA draft and really we knew it was an it was an underwhelming draft going into the thing and it was an underwhelming draft coming out. Yeah, you had Anthony Davis going to the New Orleans Hornets. Yeah, you also had Austin Rivers uh, going to the New Orleans Hornets as well, Doc Rivers's son. And of course, the Hornets, especially with the fact that they were recently purchased by Tom Benson, the same dude who owns the New Orleans Saints. Of course, they're going to start to build around those two. Austin Rivers and Anthony Davis are going are indeed going to be the nucleus of of the Hornets rebuilding project going forward as they as their future set definitely looks bright with uh, with a young nucleus a young team and also with a new owner not to mention Eric Gordon let's not forget he's also on that team as well also a couple of a couple of moves that sort of uh, that sort of got me the Boston Celtics drafted both Jared Sollinger out of Ohio State as well as Fab Mello out of Syracuse apparently Jared Sollinger's injury issues not to mention Fab Mello's um, maturity issues, which were well documented this past year at the Cuse, were not enough to deter the Celtics from drafting both of them as they are now going into a much younger direction as it looks like their big three is about to be indeed broken up and they're going to have to start rebuilding around Rajon Rondo. So the so the Celtics also making some moves this uh, at this uh, NBA draft. Uh, you know, again, it was sort of a, it was very underwhelming. You know, some people call it boring. I watched the whole thing, but really there were that, those that many names like there were in 2003 or there were in previous drafts there weren't that many star names coming out of college that really stuck out I mean but there was that beautiful moment when Bernard James who served in the service uh, was picked by the Cleveland Cavaliers he was later traded you know to the uh, to the Dallas Mavericks in that Tyler Zeller deal he was picked and the crowd at Newark chanted USA 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 because of the fact that he had served in the military there was that also there was the crowd as a whole you know you can say that perhaps the most entertaining part of the draft was the fact that David Stern got booed on pretty much every pick. Now, of course, what they do in the draft is that David Stern does all the picks for the first round, and then Adam Silver does all the, the does all the picks for the second round. He's of course the NBA's deputy commissioner, and Stern was booed so loudly you could probably hear it in Long Island somewhere and, and I say that because the thing was in Newark but Stern was booed on every pick and I think in a sense he loves it he loves the interaction with the crowd he knows he's gonna hear it you know him Gary Bettman Bud Selig, Roger Goodell, commissioners at drafts normally, they always get booed. They always get booed when, in front, when they're in front of the public. Stern and Bettman in the NHL, of course, Bettman, the commissioner of the NHL, those two are at the top of the list. And when it went, and when David Stern announced that that Adam Silver was going to be picking, you know, was going to be announcing the picks for the second round, the crowd was like, yeah, yeah, bring on Adam Silver. It was like going from Vince McMahon to Stone Cold Steve Austin or something like that. They hate David Stern, but they love Adam Silver. So I think that was also a very entertaining, uh, that was perhaps the most entertaining part of the draft. And I also think that also because of the fact that the NBA draft, you know, in seemingly every NBA draft, you're always wait for the next pick. I mean, even in the, with the fact that this draft was in Newark and not in New York, not in, the, not in Manhattan or someplace, whether it be at the Radio City Music Hall or in Madison Square Garden, you figure that the Knicks will always be, you know, the Knicks are always going to be under a microscope because they have the most fans there. This was where the New Jersey Nets just left to become the Brooklyn Nets and the Knicks fans still own the joint. What does that say about the fact that the what does that say about the Nets fandom in New Jersey even now that they're in Brooklyn? What does that say? That's why I think that they should move the draft around to different cities. You know, have you know have the 
draft maybe one year in Los Angeles so we can hear the Lakers reaction, the Laker fans reaction, or the Clipper fans reaction. Have it in Chicago one year so we could get the Bulls reaction to their pick. Have it in Miami one year for the Miami Heat, even though right now it doesn't look like the Miami Heat are going to be picking high anytime soon since they got LeBron, Wade, and Bosh. But yeah, move the draft around to different cities to, you know, so it's not just dominated by New Yorkers. So that's just my analysis on the draft. Moving on to another bit of news that happened this week. College football is finally headed in the right direction. Now, I already wrote a column on this here on the Real Sports Talk website, but it seems like college football is finally moving into the right direction with a playoff, a four-team playoff that will be determined via a selection committee. The one seed will play the four, the two seed will play the three, and the national championship game will have cities actually bidding for the national championship game. Now, I already talked about this a little bit when I wrote the column, but what I hope doesn't happen is the same thing that happens with the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is seemingly, they always play ping pong between, let's say, Miami, Tampa, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, Phoenix, and San Diego, and New Orleans when it comes to the Super Bowl. I hope that doesn't happen with NCAA college basketball, college football's national championship game. Give, give the city of Philadelphia a shot. Give the city of Chicago a shot. Give the city of Seattle a shot. Give the city of, of uh, New York a shot to host their college football um, national championship. If this is going to be a neutral site, let everybody in. But the fact that this is only four teams that will be playing in this national championship game, it's certainly better than the BCS, and it's certainly better than that. You know, the BCS's deal ends in 2014, and it's going to... And this new national championship deal, this new playoff deal is going to be, is going to go through the 2025 regular season. But I just can't help but think that four teams is just too few. Now, even though it is too few, it's a baby step. I, I personally would like it to like it to be 16, but you know what? Not everything starts out the way it originally is planned. Remember, there was once upon a time ago where the college basketball tournament was only eight teams as opposed to the 68 we have now. When the women's college basketball tournament began in the 1980s, it started with 32 and now is at 64. So expansion is going to happen. It's just a matter of when that expansion uh, occurs. So moving on from the college football playoff, now I want to talk about the New York Yankees. They lost a couple of their starting pitchers this past week. CC Sabathia and Andy Pettit. I believe Sabathia is going to be out until July and Pettit's going to be out until September. Really, really huge blows for the Yankees because they've been pitching pretty dang on well and the Pettit injury happened on a comebacker. That's a huge thing about pitching. As soon as you throw that ball, you never know where it's going to go. you got to immediately put yourself on defense because you just never know. It could hit you in the ankle. It could hit you in the head. It could hit you, it could hit you anywhere else. So the Yankees are also, uh, they're also in the news and they're also going to have to to see perhaps, you know, call somebody up in their farm system or maybe even make a trade because I wouldn't put it past the Yankees considering that they are the U.S. Mint of Major League Baseball. So a uh, couple is uh, also a couple of uh, of uh, news items that certainly serve as bad news for the Bronx Bombers, especially with the way that they were playing up until this recent Chicago White Sox series, where they've already lost two in that series. Rangers and White Sox also a very dangerous team. So if you're a Yankee fan, I would certainly put a radar on the Rangers and the White Sox if you got any hopes this year of going back to. Ah, excuse me, if you have any hopes of going back to the World Series. And the last thing that I want to talk about before I want to get to is Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots. London is calling a, a little bit too loudly for you, ain't it? Because Robert Kraft was in the news for saying that he would like to see an NFL team in London. Now, every time somebody talks about putting an NFL team in London, and I respect their opinion, but every time every time somebody talks about this, I can't help but go, ha, huh? come again? The logistical nightmare of an NFL team in London would be worse than when the Montreal Expos played half of their 2004 season in Puerto Rico. That was pretty bad. This would be worse. Not to mention, London has their football. London has their football. So the fact that they're you're, we're trying to bring American football in there 
and London already has their football, England already has their football, I don't think that that would work. Where would they play? Either Wembley or the Olympic Stadium. And by the way, NFL Europa was tried, and it was a colossal failure. So that ain't going to happen anytime soon unless Roger Goodell is really, really dumb. So that's your 10 minutes on the clock for this week. Uh, <laughs> you got the NBA draft. You have the Yankees and their injury problems. Kraft wants an NFL team in London. Oh, yeah, college football playoff as well. So once again, rate, comment, react, reply, add, and subscribe. Look forward to reading your comments. As always, I'm just one guy talking about nothing. So until next time, Real Sports Talk, 10 minutes on the clock. See you on the Internet someplace. Talk to you next week.